It's very important issues before our state. Um, we'll go ahead and begin now with the utilities division update, please, on uh, this issue. Good evening, Madam Chair, Commissioner Elijah Bina for staff. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner, on July 13, 2022, Commissioner Tova initiated a letter requesting um, um, some information regarding Rio Verde Foothills uh, community. I believe the reason behind the letter was the fact that come December 31st, 2022, the city of Scottsdale will stop providing standpipe service to the Foothills area. Based on that, Madam Chair, Commissioner, on August 12, 2022, staff issued a letter to Class A utilities to see if they're interested in providing service uh, standby pipe, standpipe service to the Foothills area. Uh, we received about six, seven responses back, one from EPCO, uh, Arizona Water, Global, Suarita, uh, Lago del Arroyo, and I forgot the other one. Um, that, no, regulated entity, the other one is... Um, in addition to that, we received a letter from another organization, a water provider called Dynamite. So Madam Chair, I believe EPCO is here to give an update on what they file. And in the interest of time, instead of repeating what they file, if that's okay, Madam Chair, I believe it'd be appropriate to see if EPCO can come and give an update. And I believe there's also an individual from Dynamite that would like to be heard. Okay, certainly. Before uh, they come forward, if we could ask legal if they wanted to address the commission. Um, Madam Chair, there had been questions raised about, you know, what is the commission's um, authority to order um, a utility to serve that area? Um, I, I think if utilities volunteer to serve, um, that would be fine. I don't believe the commission could order or force a utility um, to serve. And I know that there have been a number of questions about what our authority is on that matter. But if you have people who volunteer, then we'll take volunteers. Um, but I don't think there could be a commission order that says, Water Company, ABC, you must go and serve these people. And so with that, I hope that addresses the concerns that I've heard from a number um, of the offices. Thank you. Any questions by commissioners of Mr. Bina or Ms. Mitchell before we hear from folks? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, we'll begin then with EPCOR. Mr. Locum, would you like to address us, please? Thank you, Chairwoman, uh, Commissioners. I guess I'll just summarize sort of what I put in the letter and our, our perspective on this. It's a difficult situation for the folks who live there. Uh, I can imagine what it would be like if I lived there. And so when it, it came to EPCOR and we kind of figured out, like, do we want to do it? And we have Rio Verde Utilities, which is right there. And it seems like it, it's logical for us to do it. I mean, it, it seems like the right thing to do. And so we put the letter in the docket saying that we will, if we are the last resort, if at the time the DWID was still a possibility, um, we didn't know, but we said, if that does fail, if we're, if we're the, the one, then we'll do it. But we do have some concerns. Um, th the way we would do it though, before I get into some of those concerns is we would need to drill a separate well for, for the standpipe um, because Right now, we, the, the well capacity for Rio Verde Utilities is spoken for, and we would also need to go contract for a new separate source of water that's distinct from Rio Verde Utilities' current water source. And so it would basically be a discrete sort of um, transaction in terms of what we would need to bring to bear to, to do it. Um, because, though, it's a new well and, and the water quality at times does require treatment in that area, I put in some estimates of what the ultimate rate would be, and these are rough, please don't get me wrong, but nonetheless, they're fairly high, um, 18 to $20 a kgal, and that's, that's a high rate. And I wanted to put that in there, and this was again before the DeWid vote, because I wanted folks to know that we don't like rates like that, um, but they needed to know that as in part of their DeWid sort of assessment, and also I want the community to know, and we would do everything we needed to do to try to get that rate as low as possible, and I hope it would be below that, but it's possible it's as high as that. And now with that comes the, the reality, though, is that if we have a standpipe that, that ha translates into a rate like that in, just to make us whole um, with a, a small group of co co uh, customers, and that's really kind of why the rate is so high in particular. There's just not many billing determinants over which to spread the cost. Um, there's, there's a real possibility the customer's like, you know what, 
I'm, I'm finally going to break down, and it makes sense economically for me to drill my own well in my home, which people can do if, if they have otherwise. They, they sort of dot their own I's and, and you know, cross their own T's. Or they say, I'm going to go to Arizona Waters, Standpipe 50 miles away, or I think there's another one, I think in Peoria, I'm not quite sure. I mean, there's a few in the valley, and, and they or find alternate sources of water, which is understandable and I think would be a human reaction to a rate of that, that size. But then we have the, the possibility of starting to become underwater in terms of and not meeting our revenue requirement and not being made whole because it's, it's, you know, it would be a standpipe for this community. And if people start not using it, then the rate, you know, just to make us whole again with the rate, the typical rate making process, the rate would go up and that might result in even more people leaving. And so our concern is that that could really, that could be a pretty challenged financial investment on our perspective, from our perspective. And so the, in my letter, I had also uh, proposed and, and, you know, again, solicited sort of other people have other ideas. We're totally willing to listen to them. But the one that we came up with and the one that I think is actually viable is consolidation of that standpipe with EPCOR's larger Sonoran Water District, which was, uh, you, you just ordered it to be consolidated earlier this year. Uh, it comprises uh, what were formerly nine of EPCOR's water districts. And if it was consolidated, uh, from my perspective, that, that's the sort of thing that um, is almost the textbook case in a lot of ways from, again, my perspective, that, that, that the use of consolidation. When you have a very small community that needs outsized investment to supply them service, Consolidation can really sort of stabilize those rates and, and bring down the, the, the high spike of, of cost that, that get translated to that smaller group of customers. So I put that in as, as part of what our perspective is on this. You know, we obviously had not yet filed an application, um, but if we were to file an application, if the commission deemed that sort of the appropriate next step as a result of perhaps this open meeting, then we would be proposing that and asking that the commission order that. Again, unless another idea could, could come about, but it just, I really kind of turned it upside down in every which way and couldn't couldn't come up with another one. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any other details from my letter. I, I don't think so, but I'm available for questions. And I could answer them now, or if you want to hear from others first, that's... Um, I'm sure we, we might have a few preliminary questions and questions later, too. One that came to mind right away for me is, can you talk about the timeline, please? I understand that they're in need of service as of January 1st, and if you were to, to go... Standpipe as an option. I guess what what is the timeline? Yeah, and I, I'd also raise that in my letter. Thank you for raising that. Um, given the supply chain constraints and what we currently have, sort of in our capital budget and, and the commitments we have to meet the needs of our existing customers, we estimate it would be about twenty four to thirty six months to get the standpipe fully you know, designed and and permitted and then built uh, and the like. Um, and that, that's a long time frame. Again, we do everything we could to try to bring that down, but um, that's generally our rule of thumb, just to set expectations. And so if, if in fact, we were to pursue an application and the commission were um, to, to approve it, then we would want to work with the city of Scottsdale to have them, uh, and our hope is this would happen, temporarily extend their, their moratorium on the standpipe service. And I think what, what they have described, at least publicly, not to me personally, is if a permanent solution is in the works, then they they are willing to temporarily ex, you know, extend service. And uh, that was said in reference to the DWID, um, but my hope is that we could go to them and say, it's not the DWID, it's, it's, uh, but this is a permanent solution. The ACC has now approved a tariff. We can't stop you know giving service under the tariff until the ACC gives us that permission. And so this is a permanent solution. Um, and my hope that is that would work. I, I should also note there's um, one other aspect, and that's the CCNN component. I had raised this in my letter. Um, one of the challenges I think that faces the people that live in that area is that uh, the, the assurance of long-term service is very important to them. It's very important to them from a financial perspective because banks want to see that when they're refinancing homes or otherwise, you know, give, giving mortgages. And so um, my understanding is that um, some sort of CCNN is, is really desired or at least um, I've been told that. If that's the case, there might be ways to work around it. This, the ACC has granted limited CCNs, uh, CCNs in the past in which they were just for you know, very limited types of service. Irrigation service in particular is what I have in mind. So we could model it after that. Um, the other option I had laid out is some sort of um, CCNN where uh, folks within that, that new Rio Verde Foothills CCNN area could say, yes, please extend a line from Rio Verde Utilities to me 
to, to supply me, you know, actual traditional service. Um, of course, one of the challenges and the reason why I, I want to put a big asterisk around that is that that could be very, very expensive. Normally, when developers are building sort of subdivisions, they lay in all the groundwork for, for that, that type of service. And then, you know, it's a contribution, and then they hand over the keys to us. Um, here, it would be just, you know, new ground. And I, the ground is tough at times. I understand there's some clay lenses in the area that might be difficult to cut through. It just could wind up being very, very expensive to do that. And so I'm, I'm very um, hesitant to, to even raise it, but um, we would need to figure out some way where um, if, if folks wanted to contribute a substantial amount of the cost for doing that, uh, maybe that should become an option as well. But again, a substantial amount of cost would be, would need a variance from typical, typical commission policy on what, what contribution should look like. Thank you, Mr. Lickham. Um, questions from commissioners so far? Commissioner Kennedy? Thank you, Madam Chair. I have several questions here for you. Um, what areas are uh, served by your Sonoran district? It was, the, it's the Agua Fria, the former Agua Fria district, the Anthem district, the Chaparral district. Uh, of course, I'm blanking now. This is embarrassing at the microphone. Um, what else do we got, Jason? Havasu, Willow Valley, Tubac. Havasu, Willow Valley, and Tubac. Okay, I got Agua Fria, Chaparral, Havasu. Tu uh, Tubac. Tubac. Anthem. Anthem. So it's five they, of them. They, they were I want to make sure I'm correct. Was it five of them? I, I got five. Six. Was it six? Okay, I totally got that one. Okay, I've okay. only got That's pretty five here on my. Sun City, Sun City West, Pagos Valley, Valley. Still separate. Okay, what would the rate impact potentially be of consolidating the standpipe? The With rate the... impact, what would that cost be to those spread out? I, I don't have those numbers. We, we could include them in the application for, for the commission's consideration. I would note that it, you know, it roughly be a, it's a, it's a much larger base of customers. And so I don't think it would be um, a tremendously impactful consolidation. But that's me saying it now without the hard numbers. So why don't I put it in the application and you can make that assessment for yourself. You didn't think that was gonna be a question tonight? <laughs> um, I, I didn't think we would get into it. I thought we, you would basically say, well, go ahead and propose it and we'll take a look. Sorry. <laughs> I think we've been tough on this bench today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be tough tonight, uh, but I really thought that, to be honest with you, that you would have somewhat of some answers tonight for us to uh, go by. Um, what was the cost of the New River standpipe uh, across your customer base in the same way that you request for the Rio Verde Foothill standpipe? Jason, were you, I wasn't at Epcor at that time. Jason, you had the. Madam Chair, Commissioner Kennedy, I don't have the exact cost figures. I can tell you that the uh, New River Desert Hills uh, hauling station. It was a separate tariff. It was approved, I think, late 2017, and it's still separate. It was not consolidated as part of the uh, water case that, that concluded in January of this year. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to even look at staff to try to get an answer to that. Um, I think EPCOR and this commission has kind of been down this road before. Uh, in 2017, the commission allowed uh, an EPCOR standpipe to serve the New River and Desert Hills communities near Anthem when the city of Phoenix uh, cut off its supply. Is that standpipe currently serving water at a rate of $10 per um, Thousand gallons. Madam Chair, Commissioner Kennedy, the answer is yes. And are we looking at maybe 
double or triple what this cost is? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Kennedy, yes. Quadruple? I, well, as I indicated in my letter, the, the very rough estimates are 18 to $20 a kgal. But I would like to say we, we don't have land for it, so we can't even begin to design exactly what it would look like. Um, and so, you know, normally I'm really hesitant to throw out these kinds of numbers before we have enough information, and it is a very rough estimate. But I wanted to put the outer range in part to let folks know. I mean, the water resources, the next sort of generation of water resources are getting very, very expensive. And, um, and this, would, this would be tapping into that, that next generation. Can you describe what you would do to procure water rights for this area? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Kennedy, what we would do is we would contract. We would go to one of a handful of private uh, or government entities that have, or non, I guess non-governmental entities, non-private entities that have stored credits over time and purchase those credits from them in a lump sum that would be able to spread out over a 100-year supply and demonstrate to you know, the Department of Water Resources that we had adequate water. Would you be required to recharge the aquifer? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Kennedy, um, the no that in the traditional sense, recharging is when you um, get. Uh, wastewater from customers, you treat it, and then you, you recharge it into the ground. To and we do that, and for we recharge or reuse over ninety five percent of our water system wide. But this is water we would be just giving to customers, and since we're not otherwise supplying them wastewater service, we wouldn't be getting the water back. Okay. All right. I think that's all the questions I have right now. Uh, is there anybody from the county here, Madam Chair? The county. I do not see them on the line. No. No. Okay. So perhaps they'll dial in hearing from us. Okay. I think that's all the questions I have for right at the moment, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Olson, any questions of EPCOR? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just looking at uh, the chart that was put together uh, in the filing, I, I believe, and I'm not certain who put the chart together, but that lists the estimated cost, the capital cost for, for your proposal at eight to $9 million. Does that sound accurate? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Olson, that sounds higher than than what I had contemplated in my letter. I think it was more in this uh, five to six million range. Okay, and and you mentioned Rio Verde um, Public Utility. Rio Verde Utilities. Uh huh. Yeah. Is that your entity? It is. Okay. Okay. I'm following the chart now. So, um, okay. So that six and a half million that gets that's what gets you to the to the rate that you mentioned of eighteen to twenty dollars per key. Okay, gal. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Madam okay. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Tovad, any questions? No questions at the moment, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, Commissioner O'Connor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just two quick ones. Um, where would you, if you know, locate the well up there in the foothills? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner O'Connor, we don't have, um, we don't know yet. Uh, we would need to, you know, factor that in in terms of where we got the land and where we locate the standpipe is also an open question and a difficult one. Have you surveyed to any extent some of your customers in the Anthem area to see how they would feel about consolidation with uh, Rio Verde Foothills? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner O'Connor, no, we, we haven't um, gone down that route. Too premature. Um, it, it is somewhat sort of, you know, up until I don't know, fairly recently, it wasn't been you know a significant item of discussion. I'd say though that um, it's not necessarily. It's hard to find out who you're going to survey, and you can get a lot of sort of um, people with different opinions based on you know their backgrounds and perspectives. But sometimes you wonder um, if if you're having the same conversation. All right. Um, thank you. And I've just got a 
general question for the public who are in attendance either online or here in the, in the hearing room with us. Um, when you get up to speak, if you have any personal experience uh, with using uh, other standpipe or water hauler providers, and whether that's a thumbs up or a thumbs down, just to give us all uh, some insight. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner that's Connor. It. Again, I think that's all for now, Mr. Logan. Um, and do we have dynamite in the Ma room Madam represented? Chair, before you, I have a oh, follow up yes. question to EPCOR. Oh, yes. Thank you for coming back. I appreciate it. Um, is it true that EPCOR currently restricts uh, use of the New River standpipe to houses constructed before January 1 of 2018? Madam Chair, Commissioner Kennedy, the restriction I'm aware of in connection with that standpipe is to the geographic area of the New River community. Uh, and that's, we require our water haulers to sign, uh, swear under and affirm that they will only be serving, they'll take water from our standpipe and take it only to folks in that, that community. Can you describe that restriction and how it was implemented and how effective it is today, how you feel it's effective today? Madam Chair, Commissioner Kennedy, I think it could be stronger. Um, and I've heard of one instance in which a water hauler has taken water to someone outside of that community. And actually that prompted me to begin the internal process of like what would it cost to change how we do that. And what I would like to do is instead have the customers, the, the folks in New River, even though they're not our traditional customers, directly have customer accounts with us that they pay and then the water, we have some sort of credit system. And, I, and it sounds, I know, not, not a lot of details because we haven't worked out all the kinks, but I think it, we would be better served by that kind of process. What we have right now are water haulers um, who they receive um, a lot of information from us. We, we train them on exactly what we expect, and we have them um, sign a document and a contract with us saying that they uh, will only be serving um, folks within that community. Um, but we don't. We don't track them, we don't follow them, and so um, it's it's difficult to know how rigorous the, their compliance has been. Will that create any legal challenges? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Kennedy, uh, from the water haulers? Well, or? you're talking about basically saying you have to have an account if you're gonna pull from that source You've got to have an account with your company. So would there be any legal issues that could pop up with making that change? Um, yeah, I'm not going to say no, because the fact that you're asking that question is now making me go like, oh, I got to think about this. So there very well might be. But right now, I can't see any. Um, I mean, it, they are taking our water. And so in like one step removed, they are our customer. And so the idea would be to close that gap. Um, it, it would not cost anything for them to sign up with us, but what we'd want them to do is be aware of who's taking water on their behalf. And so if the water haulers say, yeah, I'm here for customer A, B, and C, and I'm, let me draw down on their accounts or input that, then those, uh, those customers A, B, and C, they see on their account, okay, yeah, the water hauler, he just delivered water and I see the charge. Okay, that's all great, but if, the water hauler says, oh, it's A, B, and C, but then someone else, you know, the, or we otherwise don't see um, that could be deducted from someone's account or something. My hope is that that would deter um, use in, in other areas. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, can I get a yes, another follow-up question in? Uh, just so I understand the way this works in New River, the haulers come, did they buy it from you and mark it up to the individuals they deliver it to, or the individuals your customers? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner O'Connor, they buy it from, from us, ultimately. The whole, and, and then they go separately charge uh, the, the folks that take the water delivery. So they could negotiate different prices with whomever. That's correct. I, actually, I don't even know what the going rate is for water hauling. All right, okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, Mr. Kennedy. Sorry. Well, not not oh. not for EPCOR, but make to staff. So, do we regulate haulers? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioner. No, we do not. Uh, well, the commission doesn't regulate the haulers. 
So the haulers can get water from EPCOR and then go out and charge whatever they want to charge. Madam Chair, Commissioner, Commissioner Kennedy, we, you had, doesn't have jurisdiction over water haulers. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Any last questions there? No. Okay.